Um, good evening. Um, today is September 8th, 2021 at 7.01 p.m. and I am going to call the meeting of the Hatfield School Committee to order. Um, this meeting is also being recorded for live stream on the Hatfield Community YouTube channel and it will be available for later viewing. First on the agenda, we have public comment. Um, people are free to make comments in person and there's also a link available on Google Meet for anyone who would like to make a comment remotely. If you'd like to make a remote comment, please um, put your information into the chat and we will call on you. And if there's anyone here in person who has signed up, there is not. So we will give it a minute to see if anyone participating remotely would like to make a comment. I don't see anybody. Seems okay. All right. If there is no public comments, um, we will be closing the Google Meet so that we can um, just continue on the YouTube and we'll move forward in the agenda. All right, that's fine then. Um, first on the agenda is actually an executive session. So I am going to move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's bargaining or litigating position. Also, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with um, union, non-union personnel to actually conduct collective bargaining and contract negotiations with non-union personnel. All right. Before that's seconded, is there a reason it's there in the agenda? Um, or yes, know, we had a logistical concern. Okay. That we had to put it first. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, does anyone second that? I'll I second. second. Sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll have a roll call vote. Jen? Maloney, aye. Stanishewski, aye. Bench, aye. Boudreau, aye. Englehart, aye. All right. We will be returning to open session afterwards. Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Um, the committee has voted to return to um, open session. So at this time, we will move along in our agenda um, concerning an MOA with the Hatfield Teachers Association. Um, we have before us um, a memorandum of agreement um, pertaining to the current CBA regarding um, crew. I'll make a motion to approve the MOA as presented for regarding Appendix B, extracurricular activities, crew. I second that. Is there any discussion by committee members? Mm -hmm. I don't have any. All right. In which case, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The motion passes unanimously. Um, next, we have our business affairs. Um, let's go ahead approving meeting minutes. So we have a couple of minutes before us. Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion that we take up approval of the meeting minutes for August the 11th, as well as August, page here, August 23rd. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Let's discuss. Do you need to make a change to yeah. that? Uh, I, yeah, Daniel. I have some edits. I do too. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, on August 23rd meeting in section five, Danielle's name was incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Denise isn't here. Denise, it, it was and not. it's EW. <laughs> <laughs> So we can change that. Other edits? It, it's in other places there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A few. Denise, it's in here a lot. This computer might, has a mind of it its does, own. It does. It does have a mind of its own. <laughs> <laughs> that is accurate. Did you have any others on the 23rd? No, those were my only okay, ones. On the, the 11th? Mm -hmm. um, my name is spelled incorrectly. Um, which paragraph? T 
top of the second oh, page. Yes. First and last is incorrect. And then the second paragraph, uh, it's missing the D, but also that wasn't me, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I did not I don't ask remember that who question. said that. I believe it was Danielle, but I can let her speak to that. I don't remember. It might have been Jen or Danielle. I wasn't at the 11th. Oh, that's right. Okay. What, what, what's the question? About to learn more about social equity and justice activities. Well, that was definitely that was, me. That, that was, was you. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll change that. And that was Danielle, not Denise. Correct. <laughs> no. oh, Ms. You could have a good Stanitas. alter ego, though. Yeah, your cousin Denise. Uh, Other than right. that, the minutes looked really good. Yeah, I don't have any Little tiny else. edits. Anybody else? Okay. Well, Mr. Wood, I thank you for taking these, <laughs> these notes. And if anyone would like to become our recording secretary, shameless plug, <laughs> I will again put that forward. Um, all right, any further discussion? Can I amend my motion to mm -hmm. approve with edits? Yep, I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion passes. Um, correspondence? Do we have anything to share? Uh, just late today, the letter from the Hatfield mm -hmm. um, Teachers Association regarding uh, opening negotiations for the upcoming contract yep. negotiations. Which I did receive, and I thank you. So there's a copy for everyone on the committee. For your information. All right. I don't have anything else for correspondence. So. All right. Um, in which case, I would like to move forward with administrative reports. Um, and if it's all right, maybe we can take the student representative out of order so that Hadley can give her report. <laughs> I was like, yes. I really, I really appreciate your patience and your being here. <laughs> so. Uh, so we oh, have a technical issue. So everybody is muted. No, it's we're not muted. Oh, we're we're not on Google. That's why. No. Oh. They have yeah, to no, we're shift not. We're to YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. On YouTube. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why it's muted. We should be okay on YouTube. I don't know why it's muted. Is somebody oh. watching? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole town is watching. <laughs> so popular. With rapt attention. <laughs> Two people, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Two people and that's half the town. Amazing. <laughs> I don't have it muted, so I'll just stop it. Right. Did we confirm that's on the YouTube? It's on the YouTube. It is. Well, is it because you're... Recording. I don't know why it's not going through. Is it because something's plugged into me and I'm not no. doing Google? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 Well, we shall continue technological <laughs> problems notwithstanding. <laughs> Hadley Zinal. All right. Um, not many to not too many updates today. Um, we started fall sports um, within the past few weeks. Um, soccer and field hockey just had their first games yesterday. I don't think boys did, but um, girls soccer and field hockey won yesterday. Yay. Um, we have our first student council meeting tomorrow, so we'll have more updates with that soon. We have a bake sale tomorrow at the open house. <laughs> Everyone come get something. Um, yeah, everything's running really smoothly. Um, people are adjusting to in-person learning again. Um, yeah. Basically, it. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, do committee members have any questions for Hadley? What are the next games? Um, we have a game tomorrow. Field hockey. I'm the field hockey goalie. Um, we play home against East Long Meadow at four. Um, I don't know about soccer though. Do you know, Mr. Buckland? I think they changed the boys' first games on Saturday. Okay. I'm not sure when the girls' next game is. Okay. Tomorrow at Pathfinder. Tomorrow. At Pathfinder. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. 
Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Hadley. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. And, and congratulations on that first game. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes, good luck. All right. Superintendent Wood? Yes, uh, a brief report. Um, so facilities are um, top of the schedule. Um, we have a, a, a concern with our roof at the elementary school. Um, John Garrett was very, um, not John Garrett, excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. John Robert was um, very helpful in locating a, a um, grant um, that we were pursuing to uh, get some engineering done. The Board of Health had written us a letter. Um, they are actually meeting tomorrow to talk about that letter, so I will be there. Um, but instead of getting the grant, um, actually the insurance, we met with the insurance company, um, and they've decided to, um, that they would, um, as part of a program that they offer, they would come out and do a preliminary engineering. Um, I'm calling it engineering, it's not gonna be that in depth, um, but they'll be out on Friday actually um, to start that process um, and to give us some direction on next steps for us to um, make, a, make a plan. Um, so certainly nice. maybe start preparing for um, numbers that we need to put into the capital plan. Um, so that's good news. And um, I don't know if Dr. Driscoll's gonna be up on the roof Showing them around right. or not. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so that's definitely uh, going to be in the works. Um, we did have some um, electrical issues at the high school uh, be just before the start of the school um, with a couple of rooms that didn't have power. I think I've spoken about this before. Um, and that's been addressed. Um, some of these have been um, fairly costly, um, but obviously we needed to get them done. Um, and so, um, you know, they are fixed, so the, the building's opened without um, any issues, um, which is always uh, nice to hear. Um, we did have a finance conversation, and I know later in the meeting, we'll kind of, the members will update uh, the committee on that. Um, but we're in good shape with, uh, with our finances right now. And um, personnel, um, great news. The team has been working very hard. I think we are now almost, well, we have met everybody we plan to hire, let's put it that way. Um, and so within the, within the end of this week, we'll have offered uh, jobs and hopefully everybody will have accepted. Um, and so we will be fully staffed uh, by the end of this week, um, which is uh, great. So nice. that's my report. Wonderful. Do you wanna take questions as we go? Or you wanna sure. begin? Yeah. Um, just reflecting on facilities for a minute, mm -hmm. um, the number of nearby sorry, the, <laughs> there? sorry. The, the number of schools in the vicinity who have had some mold issues I, I hear about more of them by the week yep um, obviously we we're not having any issues are we doing anything to be proactive however we are we looking watching is there anything we can do to be proactive so I, I think most of the mold issues um, that I've heard about and have experienced in the past um, was direct water in the facility. Um, uh, we've certainly, you know, done due diligence as far as cleaning um, and everything's been inspected. Um, as far as that, um, we have addressed any water coming into the building. Um, we had a little issue at the um, high school um, and that's been addressed. Um, by our, our DPW, um, and we have fixed all of our uh, condensation or uh, condenser issues that we've had at the high school, um, and I think we fixed the one that was at HES as well. Um, so, you know, as far as that goes, that's you know been taken care of, and I and I know the teams and the custodial team has been really great about cleaning um, right. you know, right away. So there's no standing water in the buildings um, that I'm aware of. Um, so you know that's. A good good first step proactively well, that segues to my question which was about the band room and the water issue because last meeting you had said you were addressing the outside right but now that leads me to ask about the carpeting because I know that when we took our little walk through there a lot of that carpet was really wet yep do we need to be worried about any mold in the carpeting? So um, we need to, I don't think we need to be worried about mold right now, but it, that's gonna be something that we look at a capital plan to look at um, replacing that that carpet. Uh, I mean, I don't know how new it is. Um, it, I mean, it looks but newer than other carpet that's in that building. Um, <laughs> Everything looks Maybe. newer than some of that carpet. <laughs> but Not by that much. might be uh, a room that we do earlier rather than later if, we're, if it's possible to do 
during the school year. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. That's dry now. Great. Thank Any further you. questions? Um, Smith Academy? All right. Um, so I hadn't spoken a little bit about the sport starting, and it's kind of nice to see the, um, the energy and the excitement around school. We're continuing with our Friday shout-outs, and a lot of that is sports-related and community service-related, which is good. Um, Xbox activities are, are fully up and running now for 9 to 12 on Thursday. And we, we're cognizant of the need to provide specific targeted academic support, uh, support for athletes. So we've got 205 to 235 Monday through Thursday. Um, teachers are around and available for help specifically for athletes who rush off and play sports, but also for anybody who needs to take them up on that. Um, the MCAS results, uh, the embargoed results are going to be released um, 15th and 17th. And as soon as they're no longer embargoed, we'll send out to families and, and students. Um, and um, the last thing is that the crew has been up and running for a couple of weeks now. We've had one, one kind of cycle of SEL. Uh, Hadley talked about Charlotte and the, the team working on the student council um, piece next uh, tomorrow. And then next week or the week after, depending on a couple of things moving around, we're starting our college and career um, focused um, supports and that's going to be the cycle as we run through um, the remainder of this year um, that kind of cycle of SEL support student council voice and college and career supports um, and in terms of staffing um, uh, Michael talked um, uh, about us being in a, in a good place with staff and Molly's done in incredibly uh, incredible hard work in running around getting people to, to come in and do uh, interviews and so forth and it's just, yeah, she's been fantastic in getting everything in the right place at the right time. So if I had a hat, I'd take it off. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hurst um, in the uh, music and band um, has been working with students to go down to the elementary school and, and start that process of cultural rebuilding with music, having been curtailed slightly through COVID in the last sort of um, 18 months or so. And I think he's starting to get some students from seven to go back into a band from art, which is great to see because that's the start of a trickle. Um, let's think of the community. The um, I, I posted uh, a kind of a call of in, call for interest in any any parent or, or family member interested in being a part of the Smith Academy S School Council. Um, and there's a post on Facebook, and it will also be going out in the email um, tomorrow about um, how parents or caregivers can become involved. And I think that's a very useful um, way of continuing to have uh, involvement in, and provide insight into the parental aspect or the, the caregiver aspect of, of what we do at school. Um, and then in relation, sort of a parallel move to the career and college readiness with the, with the weekly e email, I'm also um, sending out a, a call um, to families and friends of families and connections to Smith Academy for anybody involved in businesses in town that might be interested in coming into a career brown bag event in November to talk to um, students about careers and um, potential internships and, and skills required. And then the next stage of that is looking at um, developing that into an intern, an interview preparation uh, event in May. And then the last thing is that the, the volunteer opportunities for all students continue to be shared by the website and with all the town departments are open to kind of give me ideas and, and things that they, they need help with. And again, if you're interested in, in um, getting an opportunity filled by a Smith Academy student, whether they're NHS or they're um, just a, uh, looking at helping out the community, then, then let me know and I can add it. And then upcoming dates, tomorrow we have our open house from 6 to 8. That's largely going to be within the building, but we've built in some outside mask break opportunities for everybody and anybody who comes along. Um, picture day is upcoming on the 21st and the 23rd. And then a little bit further along, um, Spirit Week, 12th to 15th, and then Homecoming on October the 16th. And Whilst it's unlikely we're going to be having a homecoming dance inside at Smith Academy, the Student Council and the advisors are looking at all sorts of possibilities of having an outdoor event on the 15th. And that's it. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Buckman? 
Are you talking October 15th for homecoming? October 16th is Saturday, yeah. 16th is Saturday. Can you tell me a little bit more about crew? What that looks like? Uh, from a student perspective or? Yeah, what, just what like what the program is. Um, okay, so like we had last year with the, um, the hybrid model, we had a, a block of time in the day yeah. for ostensibly advisory, but we were, we were using it for specific social emotional learning. Um, supports for students whereby everybody in the school was sort of divvied up amongst the staff so we had small ratios of let's say eight students per one adult and they would meet on a weekly basis for uh, a roughly an hour um, and they would look at social emotional learning supports um, anti-racist teaching some explicit implicit bias teaching and then looking at um, a safe place to discuss all sorts of relevant issues to to students um, within the school and um, reflective of what was going on in the US at the time. And this year we've kind of expanded that and given that a little bit more shape. So we have an, SE an SEL component, which is um, a, a, a very large part of our school improvement plan, making sure that we, we acknowledge and kind of support the gap that occurred last year, whether it's social or academic. Um, we've also made a really kind of specific attempt to make sure that the student um, council organization can have that as a space should they want to run any activities and we won't have to disrupt the rest of the week or anything like that but they can also bring in speakers and for our, um, our kind of if you're thinking about the, the pipeline of what we do the end product is kind of what do we do after we've been at school how do you apply that to school how do we apply that to college how do we apply that to afterwards so that's the college and career um, piece and so um, the guidance counsellor and the adjustment counsellor are working along with um, a MICAP grant and the Naviance um, contract that we have to look at specific things in terms of looking at helping students identify their likes and their interests and then from that they could kind of move to okay what's the the workplace context in which those likes and interests can be housed in a job and then moving on from that well, what are the skills and what are the employment expectations for that once you're in there so and then the last part um, is kind of a, a study hall, and we we kind of aware that you know there, there's lots of um, lots of different opinions um, about homework and uh, making sure that we provide students a balance between being switched on inside classrooms and being involved in sports and having that um, downtime away from school. So once a month we we're, we're looking at that space as a time where students can actually do some of their work as a study hall in a supervised way. So that's the, um, the I guess, the structure of crew. And in terms of the organization, the, um, the extra duty contract or the extra duty position that the school committee approved last year allowed us to provide um, paid stipends for crew coordinators. That's, the, that's to say the people who would be putting together the SEL scope um, within the context of the other elements. So the teachers would, um, have input to that, but it's a largely three uh, members of staff, or rather one position that has been applied for by three people and split across three people, um, to so that they can put things together and plan and provide um, lesson plans and so forth for teachers to deliver. Um, and from there, where do they get their lesson plans? Is that something that this is like? Because there's crew other places, right? So is that like yeah. a common? No, it's we 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 um, are we sent developing out it our yeah own we're doing it in house um, we're we're kind of every school is kind of like its own ecosystem and I think uh -huh. looking at all the the, the different feedback um, surveys we sent out to students parents and, and staff last year have largely influenced what we put together this year and that's again what we're doing at the end of every quarter we'll be questioning. Uh, or asking students for input. We also looked at the, um, the provisional spiffy data from 2019 as a way as influencing what exactly we need to look at. We didn't have the ESPER um, survey last year, but that we could largely see what was in the spiffy survey and what perhaps we could hypothesize what might have been um, had we had that um, survey. And there's a ton of stuff out there over the PD. I've sat in on lots of PD over the summer about equity um, and equity within classroom and equity in PBL. So that's largely played a part in planning this. And, and again, one of the other things that the crew um, 
coordinators are doing is that they're continuing with their, uh, I guess, stress test or weekly check with the students in the class. How do you feel at this particular moment on a scale of one to five, one being I'm beyond chill, to five, I'm ripping my hair out because I'm nervous or worried, etc. And then there's a kind of a qualifier, give me a little bit more information. So we've kind of got an early warning system in place there, as well as a, a let's say, um, a temperature check for how students are doing in any one grade level. And then those um, forms are shared amongst the crew coordinators and then that trickles down uh, either directly in the middle school meeting or the BST meeting or the staff meetings as a whole. So we've kind of got a, to use Jean, where she's, Jean's analogy of Swiss cheese, we've, hers goes that way, ours goes this way. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Buckman? No? All right. Let's hear about Hatfield Elementary. Sure. Um, so it's been, it, uh, we had a great week last week, our first full week of the year. Um, a, lot of, a lot of great stuff happening. We had our, our preschool families today. They came in for orientation. It was really nice to see all of them uh, and their families in, and they start school tomorrow. Um, we we're really looking forward to welcoming them. That's kind of our last, last group to come and, and start the year uh, when, they be, when they begin tomorrow. Um, happy to announce that we do have a start date now for our after-school program. It will begin on September 20th. Uh, we are currently, right now, closed to pre-registration because all of the pre-registrants uh, were able to able to get slots um, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Thursday and Friday, they're still trying to hire one more activity coordinator. Uh, they have between three and five people, depending on the day right now, on the wait list. Um, and then as soon as they hire one more activity co uh, leader, not coordinator, the coordinator is filled. Um, once they hire one more uh, leader, they'll, they'll be able to have have slots for those students um, so that that's really we're really happy that, that that's gonna that's gonna be rolling pretty soon um, our open house is scheduled for two weeks from today on the 22nd from 6 to 7 in the evening uh, we we are asking that families limit the number of guests to immediate family uh, in order to keep the crowds manageable um, and we'll be sending out a more specific schedule uh, in uh, towards the end of next week um, as Chris mentioned, um, our, our new band director, Mr. Mr. Hurst, was down uh, doing uh, demonstrations to all of our students last week uh, for the band, and uh, all of the instruments arrived today for our fifth and sixth graders. Our office is full of um, <laughs> like tubas and, and trombones and, and other fun things. Um, so it's really exciting to see that, that piece back in play this year. Uh, it's really, really great for our students um, who want to either start learning or, or continue building on, on what they've done before. Uh, we're going to be kicking off our kick off the year fundraiser on September 27th, so you too can have a nice Hatfield Elementary uh, polo shirt should you choose to get one. Um, <laughs> 10 7th, so October 7th is going to be our school picture day. Um, so we can, what was the date? Uh, October 7th is going to be our school picture day. Um, uh, one, thing's that, one thing of the things that we're really excited for this year is we have Smith Academy students who are, uh, have started volunteering down at the elementary school. We have one uh, who is currently volunteering at our preschool. We have three more kind of uh, in, in the pipeline looking to see where and, and how their, their time can best be used, which is just wonderful to have that. Um, so it's really it's nice to see kind of that, that building through the, through the schools as well. Um, and lastly, I, I'd like to thank everyone who came out last weekend, uh, last Monday, to see our, our Hatfield bus in the Demolition Derby. Um, I'd never been to a Demolition Derby before, <laughs> and it was just wonderful. <laughs> it, was, it was like nothing I've ever seen, uh, especially with the school buses. There was just diesel everywhere. Um, was diesel. <laughs> unfortunately, we were, we were one of the first buses out, um, but it was, it, it, was, it was a thing of beauty. So uh, thanks to everyone who helped paint the bus, who came out to, to cheer the bus on, and to the driver, who I never met, but you know, put life and limb on the line for, for our school. <laughs> Um, and that's, that's my update from the elementary school. Thank you. Do committee members have any questions for Dr. Driscoll? Uh, not a question, but I think a thank you from a lot of parents for your agility in making some changes to drop off and pick up. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that the speed with which you guys reacted was awesome. Thank you. 
well, and appreciated. Um, Thank you. Yes, agreed. So can I just get a clarification on aftercare? So everybody that was on pre-reg has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes. So there's just a limited amount that don't have Thursday, Friday? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. and, and uh, CES will be in touch with, with those families uh, okay. this week. Okay. The, uh, their, the agreement we have with them maintains a specific ratio. Yeah. Um, it's either 12 or 14 per, you know, per staff member, student per staff member. So to maintain that ratio, they're... They need one more person. How many um, kids did we have on pre-reg? We had 32, I believe. Okay. So most days, it's it's anywhere from uh, 27 to 31, I believe, that they have. Okay. Um, I think our lowest day might be 24, actually. I think that's that's maybe Monday. Okay. Um, but yeah, we have a, have a good number every day. So it's, it's it, it'll be, be nice to have that running. Are they actively looking to be able to increase that for people that didn't get the pre reg? They, yeah, they are. Once once the program's running, and, and anyone can still send the pre registration in, um, they'll just be added to the wait list. Waitlist. And if the wait list if the wait list is such that we, you know, right now we don't except yeah. for Thursday, Friday, we don't have anyone on the wait list. Um, but if the wait list grows and they need to hire additional staff, they would do that okay. to you know to make sure the ratio is maintained, but also that they're able to provide that opportunity. For everyone. And this is just aftercare. Has there been chat about before? There has. Uh, and the, the goal is going to be once the aftercare program is, is up and running to make sure that the next step is saying, okay, how do we do before care? Um, the, the current thinking is that that will, will likely be an, an easier piece to put in, yeah. into place once, once the aftercare is up and, up and going. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you so much to the administration for being here. And let's can call it if you want. <laughs> yeah, but we really appreciate your always coming and mm -hmm. um, speaking with us. Did we need to hear anything from Molly? Molly no. didn't have a report. Okay. Right. Before you run away, I'm curious, did we hire somebody to take, I don't know if we can even chat about this, but you want to, to take um, when Kelsey, when our you. teacher leaves on leave. Okay. Um, would it be <laughs> worth, I, I think they might, oh good. Yeah. I would like to make sure they hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. I'm sorry. Did you, you have a report to share for us? Uh, sure. Just I would me. love that. Uh, Thank you for being here. So we um, had productive back to school workshops um, that included uh, expanding the eSped is our software that we already had purchased. Um, and we have provided access to it to all the general ed um, teachers, and so I provided training to them, and that was um, something that we already had access to but hadn't been utilizing yet, so now we are more robustly utilizing what we pay for. Um, we uh, reviewed and uh, provided more professional development around the dyslexia guidance to all of our general ed staff and a deeper dive with our special education staff. Um, I also provided uh, targeted PD on specific ac aspects of the IEP for our special education staff. Um, Paul was great in giving me um, reorganizing the website a little bit. So if you are on the website and want to check out the student services tab, um, there's a lot of information there, but I'll be um, rapidly uh, putting more on as well as a news section. So when you're on the general Hatfield Public Schools page next to Michael's update was, is the update from student services. So you'll see something there. Um, with John's help, uh, I submitted and had approved the 240, 262, 252, and 264 grants. So all of that went through. Um, I'm the homeless liaison, so I have attended um, a McKinney Vinto webinar in the last month and um, shared out information to key staff. I've provided um, internal systems updates and supports to our 504 coordinators and our ELL coordinator. Um, Patty Benson rose to, the, um, rose to the job of completing our universal case screenings, um, which is great. Um, so that's part of our, um, our uh, child find efforts. Um, so that was really nice. And we, because of the later case start, um, sorry, pre-K start, she was able to do that without interrupting any uh, anything else and letting the kindergarten teachers stay uh, where they needed to be. 
Tomorrow, uh, I'll be meeting with Smith Academy and Mass Rehab to reestablish um, vocational and transitional planning for students with disabilities at the high school. That was something that was in place a few years ago, but had um, had stopped. So I'm reestablishing that. So that's my update. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here. And did anyone have any questions for Ms. Bremer? Yeah. yeah, we appreciate okay. it so much. Oh, I do all. I hate oh, to hear this. That was the <laughs> I mean, yeah. What's the problem? That was a missed opportunity. Yeah. All right. Um, in the agenda, I'd like to take it slightly out of order. We have some representatives from Heads Up here um, who I'd like to invite to speak with us briefly about the work that they're doing. Yeah, if you could. Either come up to any microphone would be helpful. Better, the table. Yeah. yeah. Go to the table. Yeah, the table yeah. would be great. The table would probably feel nicer. With the comfy chairs. Yes. <laughs> and Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we are so grateful. And Sean and I are going to be co-presenting tonight. And I'm coming wearing uh, my hat as um, co-chair of Heads Up. And we're especially grateful this week uh, because this is the middle of National Suicide Prevention Week. Um, so the timing couldn't be better to remind all of us of the importance of mental health. Um, and a parent, a very astute parent who's a member of Heads Up sent me um, information that we posted on the website this morning on the nurses update page uh, and I love the the theme this comes from California um, where they say re-enter reconnect and rebuild what a great theme for this year so heads up Hatfield embraces acceptance and dismantles stigma an all-volunteer 501c3 organization is dedicated to promoting and supporting mental, mental health. Our mission is to help Hatfield become a model community committed to educating, liberating, and protecting the mental health of all its members through educational outreach, programs that preserve dignity, foster acceptance, and promote a spirit of community. So what is mental health and why is it so important? The World Health Organization defines mental health as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes their own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to their community. In other words, mental health is more than the absence of mental illness, just as physical health and wellness are more than the mere absence of disease. There's no health without mental health. The Australian National Insurance Program suggests that ind individuals can have good mental health and be living with a diagnosed mental illness that is treated successfully. Or individuals can have poor mental health but not have a diagnosed mental illness. However, if issues like stress are allowed to continue unrestrained, these can lead to diagnosable mental illness such as anxiety or depression. So how did Heads Up begin? Several years ago, Hatfield was devastated when some young people had died by suicide. Following these losses, a small group of parents reached out to the schools offering to help. Together, these parents and school officials organized a community-wide forum to help families identify risks of suicide, to help children who grieve, and to provide resources for the entire community. Over 75 people came together in this forum to have their questions answered and to listen to local mental health experts. Because some of the attendees were interested in continuing these conversations, a task group was formed that grew into a committee to eventually develop our mission, establish some goals, and begin providing community awareness and programming activities. From these early beginnings with a handful of volunteers, we have grown to become an organization dedicated to promoting and supporting mental health throughout our community. NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 
reminds us that numbers show us that no one is truly alone in facing mental illness, that we can all advocate for better, more accessible health care, and that we can reduce the stigma that continues to impact mental health. One in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year. One in six U.S. youth ages six to 17, six to 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. Of those young people, only half receive treatment. 50 to 60 percent of LGBTQ youth are especially at risk for depression, while 37 percent of gun-related deaths are due to homicide, 60 percent are due to suicide. The Veterans Administration reports that 17 U.S. veterans die by gun-related suicide each day and child firearm suicide has risen by 82% in the past 10 years. Alcohol and drug use increase impulsivity and social withdrawal, known risk factors for suicidality. A few years ago, the Hatfield Council on Aging encouraged us to send wellness surveys to local seniors via contacts at local churches, through the senior newsletter, and even taping surveys to people's doors. Of those who responded, nearly 18% reported stress, loneliness, and feeling depressed. School district administered screenings and anecdotal reports from nursing and counseling show the following areas of concern among our students. Nearly 30% self-report anxiety. Over 20% report lack of an adult connection, which by the way is a great argument for continuing crew. I can't think of a better way to promote connectedness at Smith Academy than structuring the crew program. 50% of older students report having, using, having used alcohol or marijuana at least once. Nearly 4% have self-identified as LGBTQ. And nearly 4% report having considered suicide. Thankfully, the community response in supporting Heads Up Awareness and Educational Activities have been very supportive. I will now turn the mic over to Heads Up Treasurer, Sean Selby, who will discuss some of the activities that we've organized. Great, so within our first year, we sponsored a youth mental health first aid program to help the community and the school staff learn how to recognize and respond to potential mental health crises. Um, we have also taken part in um, um, some of the uh, local chapters of the um, uh, Society for, for the Prevention of Suicide uh, Walks, the um, Out of the Darkness Walks. Um, also, uh, following the wake of some mass shootings, particularly the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas um, High School shooting in Parkland, Florida, Heads Up sponsored a bus trip for families to participate in the March for Our Lives event um, in Boston. And um, we have also um, hosted some documentary screenings, including Resilience and Angst, two titles that were uh, well received by the community. And we have another uh, potential documentary screening coming up to save the date, October 14th. Am I correct about that? For Upstanders, which is an anti-bullying um, documentary. Uh, we also um, hosted Dr. Ruth Poti, um, who um, is a local expert on addiction, and uh, she presented on the uh, physiology of addiction and the effects of drug taking behavior. Um, and every year, um, I'm sorry, let me back up. We, uh, on, in 2020, we also hosted a um, speaker, Ann Thalheimer, who is a survivor of the 1992 school shooting at Simons Rock College in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, and she gave a talk on, um, a, well, she was part of a panel, actually, that included other community members on um, um, uh, firearm, responsible firearm use and, and, and concerns over um, shoot, mass shootings, called Beyond Gun Laws, a conversation about keeping our community safe and preventing violence. Every year, except for last year, um, we have hosted a fundraiser, um, Waterpalooza, um, which brings um, community members together in July with some fun water-themed activities around the Loop in Hatfield. 
Um, this year, because we were unable to do the actual event, we did something called Walkapalooza, whereby we um, uh, decorated the loop with uh, signs mm -hmm. and messages of hope and resilience and um, um, hopefully we will be doing another water palooza in its uh, full form this July. Um, I think, did I hit it all? I believe I did. Oh, and our Go Green campaign during COVID-19 also was an activity to raise awareness for children's mental health during Children's Mental Health Week. And um, in addition to uh, lighting up the um, Unitarian Church green, we were also allowed to point some green bulbs at the cake, the 350th cake. I don't know if anybody saw that, but <laughs> that was us. Yes, that was us. <laughs> that was us. <clears throat> so we are grateful for this opportunity to talk about mental health. And um, the more we talk about it, the more we help to destigmatize uh, the issues related to mental health. And I'd just like to point out something else that was in the news this week. Um, the Baker Polito administration is uh, um, promoting legislation to establish the Massachusetts Medal of Fidelity, which sounds a lot like the Purple Heart. Um, presented by the Massachusetts National Guard to families of veterans who lost their lives to service-related illnesses and injury. Um, and two days ago, Representative John Velas, who's from Westfield, uh, was discuss who is also a veteran, by the way, was discussing the importance of recognizing the wounds that we may not see uh, that so many veterans um, um, come home with, the PTSD. Um, the veterans who um, have died by suicide. And he's advocating including that in the, uh, this particular Medal of Fidelity, a state uh, medal to honor our veterans. Um, so we applaud that and we as an organization support that. We're delighted with the support from the community um, and we're very happy to have anyone else join us at this time. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, it's really great. You know, for me, I'll speak for myself, really great to hear about the work that you're doing in the community. And I know um, it really affects Hatfield as a whole, but um, has the potential to affect our students and school community as well. So thank you so much. Um, did other committee members have um, questions or comments? I have a question for Sean. Mm -hmm. You went over it quickly, and I didn't get the name of the documentary on anti-bullying. Oh, sorry, upstanders. Upstanders. Upstanders, as in people who are bystanders and uh, and stand up against bullying that they witness. I don't know that much about it, but we're, we're Jean can. We have a link to a trailer that we'll be happy to share with all of you. It takes about three minutes. Um, and this is thanks to a grant that John Robert wrote a few years ago um, on behalf of the schools. Um, and it's the model that we're looking at is our typical model where we show the documentary. We just picked the date today uh, because we were, were bringing in a guest speaker. Her name is Bonnie Adkins. Uh, she's a licensed social worker with ServiceNet. She is the coordinator of adolescent DBT programming for ServiceNet. So it's great to have an expert come in who can talk to families about strategies uh, and, and staff, <coughs> strategies that we can try. Um, when our students and our, our children are feeling stressed. Um, so October 14th, we are, knock on wood, booking the pavilion. So it's gonna be outdoors. There's a lot of logistics that we have to work on, um, but please save the date and certainly we'll be um, promoting this as soon as our other pieces come together. I had a question. Uh, Jean, the survey data that you had, when, when were those surveys? This is actually a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, so 2019. Okay. And then um, just where are you guys advertising your, um, your work and your events? So we have a web page. It's uh, hatfieldheadsup.org. Mm -hmm. We also have a Facebook page. Um, so you can search for us on Facebook. It's also Hatfield Heads Up. Um, and we do have uh, an email address, HatfieldHeadsUp at gmail.com if anybody wants to reach out and, and um, get in touch. 
It's also worth mentioning that we spent quite a bit of our first year getting our website up and running with um, resources for families who perhaps are looking for mental health resources for themselves or for others. And it is sort of divided um, by age group, so um, school age and also um, adult age resources. And um, I believe it's still up to date, so um, something for the community to look at if they, if they should find it useful. I think I have it right. Mr. Robert, John Robert, was really instrumental. He was. So um, you guys had a really nice, very interwoven um, contact for the school district. As he has retired, has there been a way that you guys have found to sort of continue to build seamlessly when possible to support the school system? Is that something you have managed to... I, I don't know how you follow John Robert. I'm not. <laughs> so. There is no following John Robert. And it's actually worth mentioning that um, Mr. Berrios, who is the um, principal of Smith Academy, was also extremely mm. involved in the beginning. I think the death of these young people really hit him personally, um, obviously. Um, so um, to your question, um, you know, both Jean and I are still involved in this school uh, in one form or another. Um, and I think that um, because you know we do have these close contacts with this with the school, we're still able to to just not maybe not seamless, but it's it's not hard to be um, working with people in the school community. We would love to have other members of the school community come and be a part of the organization mm -hmm. if they are inspired to do so. Um, yeah. I think as, you know, as staffing changes, you know, have come out about mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, and of course last year being last year, um, that, you know, we're also uh, looking at um, grooming our successors, and I appreciate your asking that question, and, you know, certainly having this opportunity to let the community know that um, we would love to have more participation. Uh, there's a, a core group of us. Uh, and, and some substantial, uh, significant people in the community who've been involved. And we would love additional people to come in and join us. Yeah. I, I don't know if you think it's, it's your call and, and uh, Mr. Buckland's call, but whoever's putting together curriculum for crew sounds like a really natural person to reach out to. Um, might be an interesting place where you could give a lot of support and there would be some mutual interest. Absolutely, and actually, Mr. Buckland has attended several of our meetings um, virtually. So it's so he's still that's awesome. He's still in the loop. So um, it would be nice to see two um, survey results now. Kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know if we should call it post-pandemic because we're still kind of in it. But um, that I think that that 2019 data, as we move forward. Um, will be really uh, instrumental in gauging the work that we have ahead of us. Um, I agree. And there was a um, SPIFI, the Hampshire County Strategic Planning Initiative for Families and Youth. Um, they do a uh, prevention needs survey with uh, middle school and high school students every other year. And they did do one in the spring. Um, and preliminary information was shared with us at a heads up meeting. Um, and has been shared with Mr. Buckland. Mr. Buckland and I are seeking the the full report um, from the Spiffy people that hopefully will be available this fall. Um, I agree. You know, getting. Do we more. do anything for the young kids? To say uh, um, last year, what we did is we surveyed families, um, and I posted that on the website. I think in June, we had 128 families respond, um, but it was more addressed toward the parents. You know, what do you see as the top needs? moving forward, what, you know, what needs do you see? And, and we kind of split it with Smith Academy's questions being more geared toward an older student audience. Um, but I can pull that up and send that to you. Um, but we will be resuming um, surveys for the older students at Hatfield Elementary. And we also rely on families and staff, you know, when we, when we do our surveys, um, focus groups, sitting down with the kids and just talking to them, how's it going? can be a survey. Um, but mm -hmm. I will share with you what we posted back in June. That's a good question. Mm -hmm.
thank you for coming tonight. I'm, I'm appreciative here of sharing all that you've done. It's amazing. Thank Anything you. else? Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, all right. Next in the agenda, we have um, policy. And as far as the policy report, we did not meet since the last meeting. So here's Mr. Wood already gave his report, and we the policy subcommittee has nothing to add. Um, it's my understanding that the budget subcommittee had a nice conversation. Yeah. Um, policy. So Jesse is supposed to come back. We're supposed to reassess mm -hmm. on October 1st. What are we doing in regards to that? Right. So at this time, Jesse guidance goes until October 1st, and we're waiting to see. Yeah, they have a meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, come out tomorrow but we should probably plan a meeting for yep. either next week or the week after mm -hmm. yep. um, to just take a look at it uh, pieces of where data it's that at we can look and at see what we're yep. looking at yeah do you mean the full committee meet or the subcommittee sub policy. policy committee um, um what our our meeting schedule is what i just want to make sure that we capture if it changes we yeah. have a meeting the September 20th right. tentatively. So we tentative have for one September 20th. Right, which is before October 1st. So mm -hmm. our next meeting would be the 6th or the 13th. After that would be the 13th. Right, so yeah. we might need to talk about an earlier meeting. Yeah. And, you know, right now we're still waiting right. for Desi to say anything one way or another. But I guess I just want yeah. to make sure that I make it public that I don't want to wait two weeks okay. to reassess. All right. That's meeting. Um, so the budget committee had a conversation. I don't think there was a full meeting. Nope. It was just a brief conversation. Okay. All right. Do members of the budget subcommittee or Mr. Wood, do you have anything additional to add? Just that we talked about meeting. I think it's uh, we're going to do the first Friday of every, every month, month. Um, mm -hmm. at 11. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, talked about some general topics mm -hmm. um, that the committee would like to see talked about at that meeting and then obviously if anybody here has additional pieces of information or want yeah. at discussed mm -hmm. there and then brought here um, mm -hmm. and I've reached out to the town administrator there isn't a budget schedule yet for the town yet but we want to obviously get in in uh, queue for that um, I have talked to our liaison um, to the town um, uh, board of uh, selectmen um, is a select board here mm -hmm. board. Select yeah. board. Um, and um, to just talk about different things that they would like uh, for information from me from us uh, and also uh, to talk about capital plan mm -hmm. um, obviously we have some things that need to get in the queue um, there is a capital plan by the town and there's one by the, the district as well we want to update that with current information and pricing and so forth so there's some work to be done there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Great. All right. If there's nothing else to add, um, I don't have any other items requiring attention, um, unless committee members have anything they want to bring forward briefly for future meetings or anything else. Okay. All right. Um, that being said, I think I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I will second. 8.34 p.m. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The meeting is adjourned. Who would be opposed? I know. This is, this is this too much.